So that's the fingering that I use for the Brahms Sonata number three in D minor, the, the opening phrase. It's a little unorthodox, I guess, but, but I guess it begs the, the, the large question, which is, how did I get there? How did I decide to use that fingering? How, what, what made me decide to use that fingering? What criteria were behind me choosing that fingering? Well, that's what this video is about. It's, it, it's, it's about how we make those decisions, about how we decide, how we choose which fingerings that we're going to do. I think the first thing is to understand exactly what that phrase is about. I mean, the tempo, very important. It's going to have a, a big impact on the mood of what's going on. In discussing or feeling that mood, it's like we have to explore what we feel about how it sounds, about the sense of the phrase that we're trying to, to make. Is it dark? Is it happy? Is it loud, boisterous? Is it soft? I mean, these are the things that we have to, that will help us to determine, in fact, what fingerings we should use. We have to discover the contour, the shape of the phrase. We have to discover dynamic markings or the energy that we see in the phrase. And of course, we have to look at the colors or timbres of what's going on. So why don't I go through how I came to the decisions that I did for that phrase. Now, it may seem a little silly, but I think it's important to sort of explore all the possibilities. So for example, let's just look at the first two notes. I mean, what for? Okay, what else could we do? We could do one three. What else could we do? We could do one two. What else? One one. out of that batch, I think I want to narrow it down to 1-4 and 1-3. Oh, but, but not 1-3. No, no, no. I'm going to ex do an extension. My hands are big enough to do that. Hmm. Okay. Cool. But what, what else could we do? What about 2-1? Starting on the A string. Three, two. Four, three. Hmm. None of those really do it for me. For the reason, not, not because, of course, the last one's already in tune, but it was the color of the A string going to the color of the E. The two timbres just just seemed too abrupt. There was this one that was very and this one much too yeah, they were too different. Let's put it that way. Okay, let's say that we've eliminated them to one four one three. Oh. <laughs> We do need to notice that it is piano. And solo voce ma expressivo. And the piano refers to not a volume for me, but to a quality, a quality of energy that needs to be observed. So I don't want something that's very, that's too much energy. I really want. Lower 
kind of energy. See, this all plays into what I feel, what I think about that phrase. Oh yes, and in the third and fourth part, there is that hairpin on the G, on each of the Gs. Well, in the piano, it's so it's a longer thing of going to the third beat, coming back and receding. For us, so it's an interesting kind of a counterpoint. Okay, let, let's keep going. We've dealt with those first two notes. Now, what happens when we go from that last eighth in the second measure? That's one way to do it. Three, two. What's another way to do it? Three, three. Hmm. Well, why don't we go through and we see what that does to each one of them with the choices, how we can piece it all together. Okay, so what have we got? We've got one four. Three two. It's an extension, we don't have to, to shift. I sort of, sort of like that. Ooh, we really have to be careful. Don't like the shift. So I'm gonna sort of porte my bow so that I don't hear it. But if I keep going, that's a little harder, you know. It sort of goes against the legato that's there. Hmm. And we've got that happening on the A string. I don't know, that really, I, I, I want something a lot more expansive in a way without those big, big interruptions happening because of the theory. So let's try another way. crazy about that, especially. Uh, it's, that's a lot of, lot of shifting going on. A lot of masking with the bow. Not sure I really like that either. Hmm. Let's try another one. So, what do you, what, what do we got here? Yeah, but it sort of leaves a little break in between, if, unless we want to hear that, that shift. And again, we've got that, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure I'm, I'm in line with that. Let's try it another way. That's interesting. Again, not a shift, but an extension. Oh. I don't know about you, but I was, uh, it was really hard for me to, 
I, mean, I can get a reasonable four finger vibrato, but it doesn't have the quality of sound that I want. And there are one of them, two of them. Uh, no, that, that, that doesn't do it for me yet, either. What all of this eventually led me to was the one that I showed you at the beginning, the one that I started out with. Here, listen to it again. Now, what happens? My hand is big enough for that extension. I like that shift. It's sort of... So, that's more or less how, how I came up with the fingering that I use. You, you might use one of the other ones. There are no rights or wrongs here. They're only the decisions of what you think is important, what you feel you want to communicate through the use of that fingering. So that's why I like the fingering I chose. And that's how I got to it. Do take care and please be safe.